Okay, today we're going to try to do a quick and dirty run through of the Viva New Vegas modding guide for Fallout New Vegas. I already have MO2 installed, so I'm going to be skipping a lot of this basic stuff from installing the game, having the right settings, installing MO2, and we're going to go straight to utilities. But first, let's actually download the game. So there's two things that I want to do really quick before I even jump into the utilities. The first one being simply running the game to generate the initial any files and to do our video settings. Considering the age of this game, we're just going to leave everything as high as possible. Press play and get all those initial any files generated. So you don't even need to jump into the game. Just booting up the game gets those files going. And we'll back out. Go ahead and get Mod Organizer 2. And you can follow those instructions to the letter. But I tend to skip a lot of that stuff. I'm going to make a new instance within Mod Organizer 2 for Fallout New Vegas. I'm going to pick New Vegas out of our executables. I'm going to skip the tutorial. And for our eyes, we'll put it on dark mode. These master plugins need to be reloaded. Let's see if the sort function works correctly for that. So we can double check with the mod guide. Gun, class, merc, tribe, caravan. Gun class mark drive caravan. Okay, that needs to be in order, and it is now. Once you get a lot of mods in, the sort button is is uh, not infallible. You should still be following the mod guide, which Color puts uh, a list at the very end. And one of the things that I do do is put in these settings for the custom mini. So I'll click on the any editor, go to follow custom paste those things and once we have our NVSC plugins those will take effect and then even though we don't have any model texture mods yet we want to click archive and validation for this profile clear the read-only flag for any profile that you do make I'm only going to use one because the beauty of mod organizer 2 is that it's using a virtual folder instead of your actual steam folder which means you can completely reset without breaking your game if you choose to delete all your mods. So I'm going to try to do this as quick and dirty as possible. We're going to get our NVSC. Download that. We do show and folder from our downloads. And I can either extract straight to the Fallout New Vegas folder and I can extract it here. I think for this case, I'm going to extract it here and just navigate to that folder, copy and paste, and I'm going to keep this folder up because we're going to put a couple more things in our root folder that's actually in Steam, not through Mod Organizer. Next up, the 4 gigabyte patcher. Similar situation, we're not using Mod Organizer 2. We're gonna go in to the Nexus, get the mod downloaded. I'm gonna do show and folder again, and I'm gonna extract here again. Again, this is the dirty. This is the quick and dirty version. We'll paste into our Fallout New Vegas root folder. Double click, run it, press any key to continue. It has now been patched for four gigabytes of RAM. Move on to heap replacer. Do the manual download. Extract here. Now it gets real dirty. <laughs> this is why you should not do it this way. 
I'm going to run CPU info and it's telling me that I need the AVX2 folder for this mod. So it told me to use AVX2. I'm going to take this DLL file, copy and paste. And now things are going to go a bit faster since we can actually install these through the mod organizer. I'm just going to open up all these tabs and I'm actually going to skip one tweak in console paste support because I personally don't use them or find them useful, but you can use them if you want. So we're going to manually download each of these files. So now that we've downloaded all of these files, that finish out the utilities section. We're going to go to, back to mod organizer. We're going to do install new mod. Go to our downloads and now we can do all of them in order. Ideally you should be doing those precisely in the order that they are in from the mod guide. And now all of those have been installed and we just want to enable them all. And none of these have any plugins on the right. These are just engine fixes, things that'll allow the game to run better, especially when you start adding more and more mods. And we're gonna do the same thing quickly with the bug fixing section. As you can see down here, the weapon mesh actually has a lot of files might take a bit longer to download, so it'll end up in a different order in your downloads folder. Make sure that you're still uploading in this order that the mod guide is in. So if this mod finishes last, make sure you don't put it last. Make sure it's precisely in between the unofficial patch and the weapon mesh ESP replacer, as it should be. So again, when I go into my downloads folder, everything is actually out of order because of how different the file sizes are. So we're going to start with yup. I'm going to go back and confirm. See yup, then unofficial, then weapon, then the ESP replacer to make changes to that mod, and then the improved shaders. And again, we're going to enable everything now that we've downloaded it. And it's good for you to understand these conflict signs here. So this custom mini file is overriding some of the files for a tick fix. These weapon meshes are overriding some of the fixes from the yup. And then this ESP replacer is obviously replacing things from the weapon meshes. Just try to keep everything in order and double check it at the end of the mod guide. Now we'll move on to the tweaks page, which has some these three things are not too important, but I can't stress enough how important Stewie's tweaks are. It's probably, in a way, one of the best mods ever released for Fallout New Vegas. It just improves so many different things all at once. And we're back in Mod Organizer. Stewie's Tweaks, custom any from the mod guide, and you might want to rename these things. Colors any. And every now and again, you'll download something like this, so no uh, muzzles from the guns. We go to uh, download that in, and it has a name that makes it a little bit hard for you to know going back. So we're going to do a quick rename. No muzzle flash. Not that that mod has a lot of conflicts, but that is a good practice to use if it does come with a name like New Vegas Tick Fix. You might want to expand that just in case. Uh, get used to doing that. Or some mods will have a name that's that's just like letters and numbers. They didn't actually name it. It was just like a file or folder name. 
And then we're gonna do the same thing with user interface. So we're gonna download UIO, the mod config menu. It's gonna run this little start up here, this check for NDSC. Slight bug fix for it after that. Oh, did I not click download? Noob. And then vanilla UI plus, we will double check with the mod guide. It tells us to click the plugin and compatibility for key binds while keeping the font default. We'll double check with the mod guide it's telling us to select everything except for the darnified fonts. So that'll be wait menu, just hit, and not using this mod. And once again, we'll enable all those mods and just double check those conflicts. So this right here, is a base stable game with various tweaks to make that vanilla gameplay better. And then of course, some of the on-screen elements to look nicer with the user interface. At this point, you can technically stop using the guide. You can follow his visuals if you want, do your own, same with gameplay and quests and overhauls and whatnot. But I stopped there and then you can check this load order to make sure your load order is right. But if you just follow this, you shouldn't have to do this as long as you installed everything in order. And therefore your load order looks like mine right here. The critical part is gonna be when you start uploading a bunch of visual and gameplay mods that actually have a bunch of plugins. Load order is one of the things most consistently gotten wrong by people that really breaks their games and causes crashes. Just make sure you're paying attention to what your conflicts are and to anything that Mod Organizer 2 is telling you. If there's a missing plugin for another mod or plugin that's being used, you're gonna to wanna to deactivate it because your game will not run when it's missing data for a plugin. And generally speaking, uh, any weather mods like Altitude from Color need to have their plugins loaded at the very bottom. A lot of model and texture mods won't have any plugins because they're just changing models. The only issue you can have is if you're not running uh, the archive and validation. So make sure that's checked if you want to change your models and textures. One thing you may notice going through Color's guide is that it's pretty vanilla, pretty tame. He tries to keep everything really stable, especially when he's offering a guide to others. So once you get past the user interface, it's really up to you to go on the Nexus and choose what you actually want to change. Make the game as stable or wacky and unstable as you want. So I can go on the Nexus, find popular mods that I like, download them. Like this one has a really nice Joshua Tree retexture. Head right on into the mod organizer. Upload that mod. Because it's model and texture mod, it does not add a plugin. As long as I have my archive and validation checked, it'll work. And now enjoy a stable, hopefully, and modded Fallout New Vegas. I really need to download Tutorial Killer. You're awake. Can you tell me your name? I can't say it's what I'd have picked for you. <laughs> well, I got most of it right anyway. It ain't a race. 
And of course, if you do have problems modding Fallout New Vegas, please go to the Discord in his guide. Try not to just go to Reddit and get the opinion of anybody who's willing to answer you, especially if their name happens to be Cinetar Gaming. Just don't, don't do it. Don't, please don't, don't do it. We can chat later. Maybe them bullets done your brain some good.